Welcome back to AP Statistics. This is Dr. Kling, still not affiliated with the College Board. And today's topic is parameter versus statistic. All right, so first let me take you back to the Florida election uh, between when it was a contest between George Bush and Al Gore. And there was something called a butterfly ballot. And what happened with this butterfly ballot is that it might not have been clear, and this was, this was the way the ballot looked in some precincts, it might not have been clear <coughs> which hold a punch if you wanted to vote for Al Gore versus if you wanted to vote for Pat Buchanan. And that was the first of many controversies about that Florida election. It was very close. At various points in the evening, different networks called the state for uh, Bush and then for Gore. Um, there were recounts. Here's a picture of a uh, judge looking to find the famous hanging chad. That is, did, was the hole punched all the way through the ballot? Was there an intent to punch a hole in the ballot? What, what exactly was going on? So this was this controversial election between uh, Bush and Gore uh, that was decided on the basis of uh, deciding who had won in Florida. Okay, so in statistical terms, we can talk about a parameter and a statistic. statistic. And the uh, parameter in this case might be what number or proportion, let's do proportion of Florida voters, what proportion of Florida voters meant or intended intended to vote for Gore. And then we have various statistics about that. We have you can ask you can go back and look at the exit polls and see what they said about what percentage. You can look at the initial tally. So the initial tally. You can look at the, ver there were several recounts. There were official recounts. And then there was, a, finally there was a newspaper run recount. Where a bunch of newspapers got together after the election and did a recount. So those are various statistics, <coughs> and they're all, all those statistics are different estimates of this unknown parameter, the parameter being the proportion of voters who really intended to vote for Gore when they voted. And there, again, there's so many reasons why we can't know that. Some of the ballots weren't properly punched, and even if they were properly punched, you don't know whether some of those people who ended up voting for Buchanan in that precinct really meant to vote for Gore. So it's really always going to be this unknown parameter. And parameter uh, gets misused in ordinary language. The term parameter, people often use parameter when they mean perimeter. So they say, you know, this uh, this project will work within certain per parameters. What they really mean is within certain perimeters. So parameter in statistics means some measure that's true in a population. So I'm going to start to draw to some of the distinctions between parameters and statistics. I'll just abbreviate parameter and statistic. No, maybe I'll spell it out. Parameter and statistic. Okay, so the characteristic of the parameter, it's true of the population. So of all the people who voted in Florida. 
So all the voters in Florida. The statistic is, is based on a sample. The sample could be an exit poll or the, the official ballot count the official count of ballots. Now that's a very big sample. We usually don't get to take such huge samples, but the count of ballots was a, a sample. The parameter is unknown. We will never know what proportion of Florida voters intended to vote for Gore. A sample statistic, you know what it is. You that's you observe that. Known, it's observed observed. Okay. Um, we use notations like mu for the parameter. We use a notation like x bar. So this would be when the parameter is a mean and the sample, that's a sample mean mean of a sample. With a, with a sample proportion, as in the proportion of people who tended to vote for Gore, we'll, describe, we'll use P to be the unknown parameter. We'll use P hat to be the sample statistic. And in classical statistics, the parameter is given and certain. We may not know what it is, but it is a certain number. Whereas when we take a sample, we can talk about, the, about probability characteristics. We can talk about the probability of the of accuracy of our sample, and we're going to go into that in a uh, in, at great length in future talks and the rest of this course about how we calculate the 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 degree of accuracy or the probability of accuracy of our sample. But with the parameter, it is what it is. So we make so we can make probability statements about the sample, but we cannot, in classical statistics, make probability statements about the parameter. Well, you we can't even read that. About the parameter. So, for example, I cannot make a statement that is, you know, I think there's a, uh, you know, a 42% chance that the majority of voters in Florida meant to vote for Gore. Okay, either a majority of voters meant to vote for Gore or they didn't. So it, the parameter is what it is. Again, we'll never know it, but we can't make probability statements about it. It is what it is. You cannot, again, in classical statistics, cannot make probability statements about it. With a sample statistic, we can make probability statements based on primarily on sample size and we'll show in subsequent talks how a larger sample size can lead to a more accurate uh, parameter estimate an est where we think that there's sort of a higher probability that the statistic uh, is close to the value of the true parameter. So what we're trying to do 
you can think with of the with the statistic is provide a good estimate of the true parameter. So a statistic is trying to estimate the parameter. So we're trying and we're trying to get to say how confident we are in our estimate of that parameter. That's what a lot of statistical analysis does. Um, and I think I'll stop there. Talk next time about bias and variability.